Well, good morning. Welcome to Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. And I got to remember to speak as soon as we start opening this up because I tend to wait for somebody to come on and say hello or see that there's people that are signed on. And I realize that there are people that watch this afterwards. And um, so they've got to kind of put through up, put up with uh, 30 seconds or so, just silence or me just looking or. Um, so anyway, but so hello to all, uh, whether you're joining us live or will be joining us later. This is uh, I'm Pastor Tim Marvel from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. And we provide Monday through Thursday uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern time. We do our daily news and devotion. So it's news of the church. And, um, and we have a series of devotions using the revised common lectionary that we read through together. So um, welcome to all. We've got uh, folks that are here. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Larry and Carolyn and Norma. Good morning. Hi, Joan Riggs. Good to see you. Says we have eight devices on and other people are coming on, I am sure. We always, we don't start until 9.03 is when we start our devotion. So I got four minutes to babble, right? But, uh, and say, but we use it to say good morning to everybody. Hello, Ken Woods. A happy, happy Ken Woods, always. Hi, Kip and Judy. Good to see you. Nancy's with us. Barry and Margo are with us. Don Jones, we hope Katie's with you and feeling better. Hope so. And uh, just make sure I didn't miss anybody here. I think I'm all right. Yeah, there it is. Good. Good. Yeah, lots of folks coming on here. So um, one of the things I like to do periodically, I don't do it on a regular basis, but, you know, we've got a hot, hot day in southeast Michigan. Stay inside, you know, <laughs> I mean, as much as you can. Or go do stuff early or do it late. It's just going to be really warm. Although the humidity is not bad. But um, at any rate, we are here, and I wanted to... Uh, share something with you that I go and check every once in a while. And that is, there are all these um, Hallmark holidays. You know, this is national whatever day. So I sometimes I check on this. I've done it more in the past. I find myself with less time. Uh, but at any rate, it's, um, well, I know why I have less time. I'm sleeping more, which is a good thing. So uh, these are things that I would check at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm sleeping until six, so that's that's better. Here we go. It is National Save Your Hearing Day. What? <laughs> it's National Save Your Hearing Day. And then this is this is why this I said I might mention this today because the next one I go to this National Day calendar. So the next one in the line after National Hearing Save Your Hearing Day is National Speak and Complete Sentences Day. Huh. So, it's also National Flip-Flop Day. Are you a flip-flop person? I'm not. I, uh, I, I, I've tried, and I just I can't get used to them. I'm not a big sandals guy either, and I know there's many people that are, and God bless you. I just just never did it. I got Fred Flintstone's feet, I think, sometimes. And uh, it's World Parrot Day also. There's a few other things. Uh, National Smile Day. That's the other one I wanted to check. So there you go. There's lots of stuff. There's other things that didn't make any sense to me. I didn't share them with you. I'm glad that Katie's feeling better. Thank you. Joy and Steve Yamper, welcome. Hi, Joanne Butters. So, uh, all right. So on a hot day, but sunny day, and uh, again, a day that you should enjoy. Stay inside if you have a little asthma, lung problems, maybe, you know. Maybe or stay out at least the heat of the day, they recommend, because uh, it is pretty warm for May. It's May 31st, last day in May. So look, thank you for joining with us. Um, as Before we get going here, just remember, uh, many of our programs and calendars and goings-on can be found on our website, www.allenparkpress.org. Um, and uh, there you can get the latest news and everything. You can sign up uh, for our constant contact email so that you can get on a more frequent basis if you don't 
surf the internet much, you can get it delivered right to your inbox uh, and, and know what's going on. Hi, Helen England. Good to see you. Hi, Ellen. So um, that's the best way to keep up with everything that's going on. But uh, we have a very, very busy weekend coming up at the church. So I'll just mention on this weekend, we will be honoring uh, the life of the Reverend Bill Caldwell, longtime associate pastor here at Allen Park. Died a while ago, but he's coming to be home. And uh, we will have his service on Saturday. I think that begins at 11. And uh, then on Sunday, not only our worship service, oh, and that will be streamed also, um, that, that uh, funeral service. And then also uh, on Sunday, we've got, not only do we have worship at 10 with communion, right? But immediately following that, we're having ice cream social, right? And so we got wonderful weather. It's going to be warm. What better things to do than to, to eat ice cream? And I know my wife <clears throat> was shopping yesterday and got all this ingredients that I know the only thing it can be used for is when she has to make two gallons of hot fudge. So I got to get a lot of people coming on Sunday to eat that fudge up anyway, because then it's here. That's not good. Okay, here we go, folks. We are going to uh, turn our attention to the Word of God for us today. And uh, oh, remember to have fun today, right? That's the other thing that I always say when we be it going. <coughs> Excuse me. I have allergies, so they are they've been a little difficult. We're going to go over here. And before we get going, I'm going to do my breathing discipline. I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for five, and exhale for five. Kind of just resets me, right? Just because I want to concentrate and let God's word flow as uh, as we read it. You can use it for whatever you'd like to. If you'd like to participate, feel free. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Our opening devotion is Psalm 15, real short one. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who, are blame, who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. And this a one, I love this one. And it doesn't come up all that often, but it's so short, and it's, so to the point, you know, compared to some of the Psalms, saying, Lord, who can live in your kingdom? Who can live under your rule? Right? Well, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right, speak the truth, don't slander, don't do evil. This is the golden rule, right? It's almost the, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments of how we get along with one another, right? Because the Ten Commandments, we can look at those and say there's four about our relationship with God, and then there's six that are all about our relationships with each other and what we have to honor. But these things of walking blamelessly, which means that, you know, I'm not going to, oh, I did that, and you didn't like that, but I did that because it just, look, Lord, I, I'm walking under your standards. Um, and treat everybody fairly. I mean, this came a long time before Jesus walked the earth with these words that were among us. So here we go. We're going to continue on and uh, go on to our historic reading. I'm going to call it a historic reading because it's not really prophetic. But it's uh, Deuteronomy. And uh, it's this uh, another retelling of much of the same stuff that we see within the Exodus. But remember, we are to pick this up in the fourth chapter. And this is Moses talking to the whole nation. After 40 years, they're about to go across the Jordan into the Promised Land. And he is recounting so that everybody holds it tight. And this was probably really important, right? Because 
there's been a um, an academic argument made, and and I when when I first saw it, I'm like, I hadn't thought of that, right? But um, how many people that left that left Egypt were still alive when they were you know, 40 years later? And this argument is that there might have been very few, if any, other than the leaders, right? So regardless, um, you have a whole couple generations of people that need that that um, that they would need to set this story in stone in front of them because this is why we're here. This is why we have what we have, and this is what you have to do. So here and be and be on the lookout for these things that can cause uh, tremendous problems. And and what we heard about yesterday was idols. Don't make idols and worship them, right? Because we don't worship the created; we worship the creator. We value the created, and we can see elements of the creator in the created, but we can't worship the created. Okay, here we go. We're gonna, but so we're gonna continue to read here in Deuteronomy four twenty-five through thirty-one. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. When you have had children and children's children, and become complacent in the land. If you act corruptly by making an idol in the form of anything, thus doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord your God, and provoking him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will soon utterly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. You will not live long on it, but will be utterly destroyed. Was that? That's a that's a run-on sentence forever, but that's the way that it comes through. This is all linked. I mean, it's run on because in the Hebrew, this went on. This was one thing. This isn't just pick and choose here. This you got to take this whole package, right? And uh, and understand that it, this is the deal, right? And and the warning comes after you have children and your children's children. There's a homestead. That you become what? Complacent. Complacent. This is why it's coming. All right, let's pick it up here. With verse 27 here. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples. Only a few of you will be left among the nations where the Lord will lead you. There you will serve other gods made by human hands, objects of wood and stone, that neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. From there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and soul. In your distress, when all these things have happened to you in time to come, you will return to the Lord your God and heed him, because the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will neither abandon you nor destroy you. He will not forget the covenant with your ancestors that he swore to them. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. You know, um, Moses is saying, this is going to happen. This is an, it's, it's a warning, but it's also going to, this is, this is going to happen, right? And, um, and, and this is how it's going to happen. So, you know, I'm giving you this warning, do it, but when it does happen, remember that these excursions away from God can happen, right? And there might be times of distress and separation and anxiety, but that road will always come back. But remember, the reason why that separation occurs is their action. They become complacent. Right? And then it says, what that return, what is necessary? It's, you search after God with all of your heart and soul, and you'll be found. That, that's a wonderful and merciful God. It really is, right? And, um, and uh, we need to remember that. Uh, in the context of, we, you know, as I said yesterday, we can read lots of terrible, terrible things in the Bible. You can say, how could a God be there to do this? But we have a God that does this. Right? Look, looks for repentance. And uh, all right.
So let's go on to our New Testament reading. 2 Corinthians. Second letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. And we are in the kind of the beginning of it. We're going to pick it up in the first chapter, 23rd verse, and we're going to read up into chapter 2, verse 11. But just remember from yesterday that, um, or I shouldn't say, that sounds like I'm being authoritative, and I don't mean to sound that way. If, if you will remember from yesterday, um, so um, we, we, he was talking about some very um, sp specific things, including uh, talking about the fact that uh, he had been hoping to come visit them and it had communicated that to him. And so he says, hey, look, you know, my plans changed, and they changed because I was in service to the Lord, and I understand that you might be mad, right? But this is what was going on, and take this as a greater lesson to say, who do you serve and what do you value, right? So uh, he's going to continue on to this. So here we go. Let's pick it up and listen for the word of the Lord. But I, this is Paul writing, but I, Paul, call on God as witness against me. It was to spare you that I did not come again to Corneth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith. Rather, we are workers with you for your joy because you stand firm in the faith. So I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who would have made me rejoice, for I am confident about all of you that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote you out of much distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent not to exaggerate at all to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person, so now instead you should forgive and console him so that he may not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I write for this reason to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. This is a, this, I, I, I'm confused by this. Um, it is confusing, right? Because there might, there, there might be a missing letter here. And, um, but there's something that happened within this community of faith, right, that um, they were probably calling on Paul, saying, Paul's going to come, he's going to settle this thing, right? Um, and I think that, this is my interpretation, I think that the church in Corneth galvanized itself against a specific person for some sort of a specific act, and we're looking right, uh, for Paul to come and take care of it. Um, but Paul talks about the pain that it was. So what, what would the pain be if he had shown up at that time, right? The fact that, um, um, you know, either, either they would uh, move forward in an earthly manner and kick this guy out, right, or, or punish him, um, or Paul would have to stand up and say why they shouldn't do this in front of everybody, and he didn't want to cause that. He knew that was going to cause pain, so he figured he was going to say, hey, you know Christ. Work this out, right? Work this out. And then forgive. That's when forgive. You know, and, I, and, and regardless of what with the specifics of this, I think one of the lessons for me when I read this is this, is that that forgiving, right? That, that, um, that being in relationship and then almost inevitably having things that are coming that, that uh, cause that relationship to be under stress and to pull apart, right, that um, that, that forgiveness you know, is that glue that holds that together, you know, and, but it has to be, and, and Paul picks up on this because he says, you know, we forgive, but, you know, we have, to, we have to be aware that Satan, you know, is at work, 
And we have to make sure that we're forgiving the person and then not that sin. I hate that word, you know, forgive the person. Hate, hate, love the sinner, hate the sin. That's not one of my favorite verses. But uh, it's not even a verse, really. But anyway, sayings, I should say. I mean, it's true, right? But, uh, but I think that we forget when we say that. I think we forget the completeness of the forgiveness that we see in Christ, that we recognize that that's the forgiveness that we need to extend to our own relationships, right? Which was complete. Jesus didn't deserve to die, and we didn't deserve to have that forgiveness given to us, to, so that, you know, and, and we need to do that with our own relationships, too. All right. Let's read uh, our gospel reading, Luke <clears throat> chapter 15. It's verses 1 through 2, and then we're going to skip over to 11 through 32, and it's kind of long. The reason why 1 and 2 is there, because what have we heard about? We, we heard parables that Jesus is teaching in to the Pharisees and the scribes. Right? And he's talking about how um, the first one was the lost sheep and how the shepherd leaves the 99 to go find the one, about the mm -hmm. 10 coins, the silver coins, that the woman uh, loses one of them and she lights a lamp and finds it. And both of those, when both of those things were found, the triumphant uh, party that happens about that. Right? So um, anyway, the uh, so those two things and then... This is the next thing that comes. So that verse 1 through 2 is just the introduction, and then we would have those next two parables, and then this one. So could there be a progression at work here? Think about that. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, that This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like the one like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came home and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on slave replied, your brother has, a, has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you. I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never even given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back and has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him? And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead, has come to life. He was lost 
has been found. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. We know this one, right? We know the prodigal son, right? The prodigal. So what we might not realize is that this is kind of like the crown jewel of the succession of three. And the thing to think about is why did Jesus teach him in this way? And I think it was to, re to have a greater revelation, right, of God's relationship with us and how that needs to be reflected in our lives. The first one was, hey, this is your job, right? Your job is to take care of the sheep. Go take care, right? Okay, so, yeah, he does that, but that's, and, and uh, sometimes we do things because we're, you know, it's our job. We're paid to do them. And then the second one was actual something of great value, right? That you don't just discard something of value. It's lost. You go and you find it. A little deeper of that one, isn't it? Right? Are you a value? Would your, would your creator turn on a light and search under everything for you? Yeah. And then this next one. This is how repentance works, right? That God celebrates when we repent, when we recognize that we've done something that has dishonored God and in the same thing has dishonored our relationships with other people, has caused broken relationships, that when we repent and say, ah, this, that we restore those relationships. And, and now this one, I mean, obviously, and, 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 and um, so this succession of parables, right? I think just gets steadily stronger and wider about the love of God that he has for us um, and that abundant life that he wants us to have and the celebration that we have to have when we restore relationships, right? That's, that's the most important thing. So, um, yeah, I love this. I love this passage. And I know that sometimes, um, uh, you know, we don't get a chance to, to touch on this because that's a lot of reading if we read all three of them at one time. Uh, you know, we'd have some folks falling asleep probably. But here we go. We had this opportunity with you, this special opportunity that you only get if you tune in to daily news and devotions. How's that? All right, let's go back here. Hi, Paul Wolf. Yes, thank you very much, Carrie. Hi, Linda Wolf. Yes, she does. I'm very lucky. Hi, Judy Sutherland. Oh, when you get the help, Judy, you got to be outside. Right. Okay. Well, we hope everybody's doing okay. How many people do we have on here? Devices. 19. We're starting to build it back up again. See? And I have confirmation that next Monday that we do have the dynamic duo signed up. I am at my home office as I speak to you right now. And uh, we're having some internet problems at the church, which, uh, so just be aware of that. So, um, the, uh, we got, we're going to work on getting that going. So, but if you need me, feel free to give me a call. All right. And, um, as we get ready to leave this place, we're going to give a, have a prayer together. And I certainly lift up everything that you might need in your life, not because I want to give it to you, but I know that God wants you to have it in your life. So let's pray. Lord, Many times when we gather together and as uh, we uh, say good morning to each other and uh, we see that there's things that concern us that, uh, that we lift up, people that are sick and also people that um, are in need. But Lord, as we gather today, our devotional readings led us to a point where we realize how valuable we are to you. So Lord... Uh, we should never live our lives and say, what difference does it make? Or does anybody care? Because you, through your gracious acts, have demonstrated our worth and our value. And Lord, when we're loved, uh, we are also given the freedom that we know that we know that that love will never be left unless we walk away from it. So Lord, continue to guide us, illumine the path in front of us, and let us have our lives that reflect your glory and your intent. 
Let us stand for what is right. But let us not stand from an obnoxious standpoint. But let us support those who are being oppressed. Let us lift them up. And uh, by doing so, perhaps the people that are oppressing them will recognize their faults and come back and repent themselves. Lord, we pray for peace because it's a violent world that we live in. And we know that uh, we might be grasping at something that is uh, seemingly out of reach. But we do pray for your kingdom. And we do pray for the time when there will be no sickness or illness or death, but only life everlasting under you. And uh, But Lord, in the meantime, strengthen us and support us. Heal the sick. Feed the hungry. And Lord, grant us a peaceful rest when we retire each night. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. There you go, folks. God bless you. And, uh, oh, prayers for George Mason. I didn't see that. I'm sorry, Carrie. So prayers for George. Prayers for George. All right. So um, next time we get together, tomorrow, it's going to be a whole new month. It's going to be June, right? So June 1st. And uh, so as we come together uh, tomorrow... But until that time, have a great day in the Lord. And remember, God does love you, right? I love you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. So let us show you how. God bless you all. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.